everyone. My name is Jesse Houghton. I am a product manager on Visual Studio, and I'm excited to continue the Visual Studio for Beginners series. Now, I'm in this video, I'll be showing you how to get started with Git and GitHub in the IDE to take advantage of all of that goodness of backing up your code and collaborating with your friends. Awesome. So what is Git actually? Git is a source control provider. Source control or version control, you might hear the term kind of thrown around different ways. Um, but what it does is it takes snapshots of your code and allows you to roll back changes if you run into any issues. So let's say I introduced a bug and I want to actually make sure that I go back to a working version to continue on my development. GitHub gives me that power. And the way that it works with Visual Studio and GitHub is kind of demonstrated in this diagram. You've got the ability to clone projects from GitHub where they will be hosted in the cloud. And then you'll introduce your changes in Visual Studio. Those changes will get cut into snapshots, like we mentioned before. And those are tracked by the version control system. And then you can push those snapshots to the web. So you've got that local and remote copy to fall back on. The way that works with your collaborators is that everybody has a different copy of that Git repository on their machine. So that's where clones come in. Um, they're going to be uh, different versions of the same repository, which is just the, the series of folders that kind of make up your project. Git is also organized um, with branches. And so this is a snapshot from Visual Studio where you might have a mainline branch called FormFix where you also might have gone on a little bit of a tangent over here to do some site exploration, or maybe you discovered a bug that you wanted to keep the fix for separate until you were sure it worked, and then you can introduce it back into the main line. So let's actually see what this looks like in action in Visual Studio. So here I have a brand new project. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have that local copy thing initialized, and I can go work in the web. By doing that, I'll go ahead and click Add to Source Control, and I'm using Git. And this is going to give me the ability to initialize my Git repository. So if you're familiar with the command line, this is the same thing as running Git init, and then setting your remotes and pushing it to the web. So here, I've got my information all logged in. Awesome and easy, because I was signed into Visual Studio with my GitHub account. And then I'll just click Create and Push. You'll see that Visual Studio is kind of working in the background. Make sure that creation has gotten kicked off. Soon I'll be able to see kind of the information reflected in my Git changes window. So it let me know that a new Git repository was created. And I can even open that up in the Git repository window to kind of see how that's been going. Let's go ahead and move my tabs back on top so I have a little bit more space to work with. Like I said, GitHub connects to a Git hosting provider like GitHub. And if you want to actually jump quickly to what that looks like, I can open in browser via that context menu. And you can see that I actually have all of my files on the web. So I know that I backed everything up correctly. So the first thing that you might do in a new project is create a new branch. Let's create a branch called main. And that'll be our main development branch. And then if I'm starting on a new feature, I might use that same workflow, which was clicking on my branch drop down here and creating a new branch. I'll call it feature branch one. And then I'm ready to create that based off of main. Checking out the branch means that's the area that I'm working on. And all my changes and snapshots are going to be associated with that branch. So now I'm ready to work on feature branch one. And I can add another console.writeLine statement and write my message that says added new statement and commit that. And that action is what takes a snapshot and gets that saved on my local copy. And then the action of pushing is what pushes that up to the remote copy. Let's show another example when I am ready for kind of my side project or my different feature branch to be ready to merge into the main branch. I'll go ahead and quickly swap to another console app I have on the side here. And I have my main branch 
Let's take a look at the Git repository window to see the state of this. And I'm going to use the new um, multi-branch graph, which actually allows me to visualize multiple branches at the same time to see how my feature branch compares to that main branch and if I can expect any kind of conflicts or any problems when I merge that in. I'm feeling good about that, so let me go ahead and check out my feature branch. I can do that by double clicking in the Git repository window, or I can switch what branch I'm on in the branch selector up above. Let's say I'm all ready to create a pull request from this view. And a pull request is what allows me to get my code from my branch into the main branch, but with a couple of checks and balances. So all of the code that I've created is going to have a diff against the main branch. And my colleagues might want to take a look to see all of the changes that I introduced to make sure that I didn't miss anything, I didn't make any mistakes, and that they're comfortable having my code pushed into the main branch. So let me go ahead and right click on feature branch and click the create APR. I'm seeing, yep, create pull request. Yep, I maybe wasn't seeing that on the other one. Okay, so yeah, the reason I wasn't seeing that option for creating a pull request was that I missed that one step of pushing my commits to the remote. So let's make sure we do that. And you can actually see that it has a good idea that I probably want to create a pull request once I've pushed to my feature branch. When I click on that create a pull request link, I get this brand new view that's available in the Git repository that's available in my new tab here. And I can select which branches I'm merging into and from where. I can specify the title of my pull request and we'll say that this is adding a new feature. And I'll talk about that the new feature includes a random number guessing game. I can click Create, but I also can add reviewers, review each of the differences in my view, and it gives me a really quick and easy way in the IDE to prepare that pull request for the web. And I can view that in the browser. Well, thank you so much for joining me for the Visual Studio for Beginners series. You've got all the tools that you need to get started. And just remember that you can always look back at these videos and all of the other content on the Visual Studio YouTube page. Happy coding.